A new study has found too much coffee may harm kidney function in some people. The findings suggest the link between coffee and kidney dysfunction depends on your genetics and how much of it you drink. Joining me now to discuss is Dr. Marla Shapiro, CTV's medical contributor. Good morning. Good morning. So what did the study look at? Walk us through it. So it's really interesting because it looked at the genetics and how your genes can influence coffee metabolism. So there is things called cytochromes, and particular cytochromes are genes that make the enzymes that turn you into a fast coffee metabolizer or a slow coffee metabolizer. So 1,200 people studied over an eight-year period of time with stage one hypertension, which is defined as more than 130 over 80, which is really not all that high. And it looked at those who were slow metabolizers and fast metabolizers. If you were a slow metabolizer, and we'd say about 50% of European ancestry are slow metabolizers, South Asian, black, your 70% chance of being a slow metabolizer, you had a much greater chance of having kidney trauma, kidney damage, as measured by protein in the urine, and you also had a much likely higher chance of a worsening of blood pressure. And that was with as little as about 300 milligrams of caffeine a day. Which amounts to what? Well, which amounts, which amounts probably to about two eight ounce cups or so. And the bottom line is, is that if you look, for example, at people who drink Vente cups of a Starbucks or a big cup of a Tim Hortons, you can see there that it's about 260 to 300 milligrams. Health Canada says for the average individual, you shouldn't have more than 400 milligrams of caffeine. But if you're pregnant or planning a pregnancy, it should be much lower than that. We talk about two to 300 milligrams of caffeine. But the bottom line is that most people don't know whether or not they're a rapid metabolizer or a slow metabolizer. You can measure this cytochrome, but certainly it's not covered by most provincial health plans. Hmm. So it's just easier to keep your caffeine intake a little bit lower. Okay, so it's sort of trial and error. Well, you know, there, you'll ask some people when you have a cup of coffee, do you feel jittery? Do you have palpitations? Yes, do you feel yes. Little, yes, so <laughs> yes, that doctor. Mean, that may mean that you're, you're a slow caffeine metabolizer. It hangs around a little bit longer. Also interesting, for example, if you have a cup of grapefruit juice in the morning with mm -hmm. your breakfast and then have your coffee, that will keep your caffeine around longer. The interaction of the grapefruit acts the same way. It keeps the metabolism slow. On the other hand, if at dinner you're having a cruciferous vegetable like broccoli or a Brussels sprout, cauliflower, that will actually speed up the caffeine metabolism. Bottom line, I think, for most people is, is that you want to keep your caffeine under check. You know, if you're someone who's drinking three to four to five cups of coffee a day, it doesn't matter which brand. It's the caffeine that's going to get you in terms of the blood pressure as well as the albumin or protein in your urine, which is a marker of early renal decline. Wow. Okay. Take that, everyone at home drinking their cup of coffee right That's now. That's right. Have a cup of tea. <laughs> yes.